In this video, we are going to learn all about translations. A translation is an example of a transformation. And a transformation is any sort of operation that you perform on a shape or an object to change it somehow. With a translation, the operation that you're performing is essentially a slide. So you take a point or an object or a shape and slide it to a new location so that the new shape, the image, looks exactly like the original, it's just in a new place. So for example, we could take this rectangle and translate it with the rule that every point x, y goes to the new point x plus 4 and y plus 2. So what that means is that all the x coordinates increase by 4 and all the y coordinates increase by 2. Another way of thinking about that visually is we're going to shift it 4 units to the right and 2 units up. So if our original shape was named a, b, c, and d, our new shape will go 4 to the right, so a will go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right and 2 up. So A prime, and this little notation there is read as prime, and it just means our image, our new resulting shape, will be right here. And we do the same thing for all of our points. So B prime will be right here. D prime will be here, and C prime will be here. So here is our resulting rectangle after the translation. So again, a translation is just a slide. It doesn't involve any rotating or flipping. It's just if you take something and slide it to a new location. Now when you're dealing with a point that is translating to another point, one way to think about that is with a vector. And a vector, a vector is a quantity with both direction and size. So if we were to translate point A up to point B, this vector, which is like a ray, shows the translation. So this ray is literally the vector. And the way that we would notate that vector is we would say AB with a little ray on top of it. And we would read that as vector AB. Notice that I started with letter A you have to start with your initial point whenever you're writing a vector. So I had to start with A. I couldn't have said B A. I had to say A B. And B is called your termina point, and that's where the vector ends up. Now we can also describe how big this vector is, like how much is it changing A to B. So to do that, we should think, what's the horizontal change and what's the vertical change? So horizontally, we're changing by 3. And vertically, we're changing by 5. So vector AB, we could write as 3, 5. And we use these brackets like this to show that it's a vector as opposed to parentheses, which would notate a point. So we want to use these type of brackets to show the difference between the point and the vector. This right here is called the component form of the vector because it sort of breaks it down and shows the horizontal change and the vertical change as 3 and 5. And again, vectors are related to translations because vectors can help to sort of describe the translation of a point to another point. 